how do you think the music industry has changed in the last 35 years and you think it's for the better? Yeah, I, I would say the, um, the music industry has changed dramatically. That, that's, that's, there's no question about that. Um, the one thing that I am very dubious about is whether or not we've actually improved from the way we used to record, which was analog. And admittedly, Pro Tools, which is you know the, the de facto digital way of recording these days, is a wonderful tool. But I think in the wrong hands it could become it can become a burden. And then even in the right hands, the danger of being able to manipulate so much, uh, if the singer's out of tune, you put it auto tune and you can retune the singer. If the drummer's out of time, you can go to beat detective and you can make him play in time. And so what happens is, and I'm not saying this is the case for everybody, and I think there are a lot of very good records being made today uh, utilizing Pro Tools, but I think the tendency is to become so anal about tuning the vocals, making sure the things, everything's in time. And you, you come out with basically a formula styled record. And if you listen to the top 10, 15, 20 albums, I'm talking rock albums now, um, and you play them back to back, they have a tendency to sound the same. And that to me is very unfortunate. See, to me, rock and roll is not about science. It's about four or five people going in the studio and rehearsing first, making sure the band actually plays together, then taking the band on the road and making sure that the audience likes what they hear so that the band has a chance to modify that, and then go in the studio and record it and hopefully try to record it in such a way that you retain the live factor that you don't spend three days getting a drum sound. You don't spend two weeks um, fixing all the vocals so they're perfectly in tune and the same with the drums, that the drums are in time and all that. And that to me takes away the spontaneity of what rock music is all about. I mean, it's not rocket science, it's pretty easy to play. It's not. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a genius. I mean, it's good if you are. I mean, then you could, then you're a Hendrix or you're a Jimmy Page or you're a Jeff Beck or you're um, whoever. I mean, that's genius. But the problem is that bands have a tendency to come in and think, oh, they've got to have the image right, which is, I mean, that's part of the economics of today. Uh, you know, the record has to sound perfect, which is also part of what we're doing today. And, and, and to me, it's not rock and roll. Rock and roll's got to have hair on it. It's got to be stupid at times. It's got to be inane at times. It's got to be beautiful at times. It's got to be poetic. It has to have mistakes in it. It has to have hiss and nonsense and crap. And, and, and the fact that Zeppelin, or, or any band you can think of, the Stones, Zeppelin, Henry, if you listen to those records, those great classic rock records, which we all try to, and bands today always try to emulate, or they respect and revere and figure, try to figure out how the hell they can get to that level, it's full of mistakes. And they traded on their mistakes. They would take a mistake and make it into something. And who cared if the drummer dropped a beat? Who cared if the thing sped up and slowed down? It didn't matter. And to me, it still doesn't matter. It's all about the, 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 the three things, the three critical elements. The song, the song, the song, the song, the song. That's the first thing. The second thing is the performance. Because after the song, it's, it's the person who's delivering that message to the public. If that person can't emote or project, go home. So it's the, it's the song, then the performance, and then it's the recording. The recording is really the third thing on the list. So. I try in my records as far as possible to keep as live a feel as I possibly can. I record everything analog, and then I dump it into Pro Tools. Then I go into the digital world. But I try to retain as much as I can of the original intent of the music and record it as live as possible. So are we changing for the better? I'm not so sure.
I'm not convinced. I mean, yeah, there are some advances. I think for every advance that we have, there's three backward steps. I mean, I don't want to be sitting in here while somebody's typing away at a computer trying to fix vocals. I, I want the bloody singer to go out there and do it again until it's right.